Min-term expansion is a technique that allows us to go from a Boolean function to the circuit for that function. Before explaining how it works, I want to introduce some useful notation. So recall that the AND gate has a truth table that looks like what you see here when it has two inputs, X and Y. And if you look at it, you'll see that the output of the AND gate for those two inputs is equal to the product of the inputs. And as a result, when we're writing something that involves an AND, we're often going to write it in a way that uses multiplication. So instead of saying x and y, we can just say x, y, where the two variables are being multiplied. The truth table for OR looks like this, and if you look closely, you can see that the output of the two inputs, x and y, is just the sum of x and y. And so when we write x or y, we will often do so using an addition symbol. And then for the NOT operator, or the NOT gate, we're going to write that using a bar over the variable. So for example, if this is my Boolean expression, x and y, or x and not y, I can take that first component, the x and y, and write it as x, y. Then I use a plus for the or. And then the second thing that's being ORed is x and not y. And so I'm using multiplication for the AND, and I'm using a bar for the NOT. We can use Boolean notation to summarize a truth table, Boolean function. So for example, we looked at this circuit in the previous video, and we saw that its truth table is what you see here. And it turns out this truth table can be summarized by this Boolean expression written using Boolean notation. And the reason we know this is true is if you actually take each combination of inputs and evaluate this Boolean expression for them. So for example, when x is 0 and y is 0, not x is 1, not y is 1, and then we're multiplying those together, we're anding them, and then x is 0, y is 0, we're multiplying those together because we're anding them, and then we're going to add the result because we're oring the two things, and you'll see that you get 1, which is indeed the output for those inputs. And the same thing is true for every combination of inputs. So when x is 0 and y is 1, not x is 1, not y is 0, x is 0, y is 1, we do the math, we get the same thing as the output of the circuit. Same thing is true for the other two inputs as well. And so this Boolean expression summarizes the entire truth table in one compact form. And this expression is known as the min-term expansion of this truth table. To build a min-term expansion, first of all, you want to create the truth table for your Boolean function if you don't already have it. And you can just do that by asking yourself, what's the appropriate output for each combination of inputs? Next, cross out all rows that have an output of 0 and focus on the ones that have an output of 1. For each of those rows that have an output of 1, we're going to create what's known as a min term. We're going to AND the input variables together, and if a variable has a 0 in that row, we're going to negate it. So for example, if we look at the second row here, the inputs are 0 for x, 0 for y, and 1 for z. And so therefore, we have to negate the x and the y because they both have a value of 0. We don't negate the z because it has a value of 1. So that is the min term for that second row. And then you want to keep doing that and you OR the min terms together. And so for this truth table, we have the one that we already created. Then we have one for the third row and notice that we're negating the x and the z because the inputs are 0 for those variables, but we don't negate the y. Then for the fifth row, we have this min term. The x is a 1, so it's not negated. The y and the z are both 0, so they are negated. And then the last row, all of the inputs are 1, so nothing is negated. So we end up with four min terms, one for each row in which the output is 1. We OR them together, and that gives us the full min term expansion of this Boolean function. We can then take the midterm expansion and create the corresponding circuit. And so we have our inputs, and you can see we have a line for each of those inputs. And then for each min term, we're going to create an AND gate 
And so let's label the midterms and see what those AND gates look like. For midterm A, we need this AND gate. And you'll notice that we need some NOT gates as well because of the fact that we are negating x and y. And so if you are negating a variable, you need to make sure to pass its value through a NOT gate before it comes into the AND gate for that midterm. We don't need to negate the z, and so there's no NOT gate for it. So that's the midterm uh, AND gate and NOT gates for that first midterm. Midterm B looks like this. Notice we're passing the inputs for x and z through NOT gates because they are being negated, and then everything is being fed into an AND gate for that midterm. And then we do the same thing for midterm C and for midterm D. So that gives us four AND gates, one for each midterm. We're then going to take the outputs of those and feed them into an OR gate because we are ORing these midterms together. And so we take the outputs of the AND gates, pass them into an OR gate, and then its output is the output of the circuit as a whole.